factoring trinomials by grouping, we're going to do a little bit more, uh, slightly more challenging type questions than what we've done the last couple times. Um, and so by grouping, here's the process and the steps that we're going to go through. Um, so this is the standard form. We've been seeing this one in the past. Uh, AX squared plus BX plus C is the standard form for a quadratic. Quadratic means it's an X squared function. That's the highest power. So when it's written in descending order, that is the highest power first, then the x without, or just the one for the power, and then no x's, this would be a quadratic in descending order. When it equals zero, the thing we're going to do is we're going to factor this. And what we did in the past, we looked at that and said, oh, what two numbers multiply to the last one, add to the middle one. It's going to be a little bit different now that this leading coefficient is two. The ones we've done up until now, the leading coefficient usually has just been a. 1. So it been just been x squared. So now my a is 2. In this case, my b is negative 1. And my c is negative 6. So procedurally, it says what I have to do up here is I have to think of the factors of a, c that add up to b. So I first have to find AC. Well, AC means A times C. And my A number was 2 times my C number is negative 6. So that'll be negative 12. What I then have to do is after I find AC, I need to think of the factors of AC. Factors means what numbers multiply to negative 12 and then eventually they add to b. So the first thing I'm going to do is start thinking through like we've done in the past. Negative 12 and 1 multiply to negative 12. Um, negative 1 and positive 12 multiply to negative 12. Two and six. Negative 2 and 6. Negative 6 and 2. Negative 4 and 3. Negative 3 and 4. Is there anything else? I can't think of anything else. So then, those are the factors. I then am thinking, well, which, what do they add up to? What is their sum? So negative 12 and 1 add up to negative 11. Negative 1 and 12 is 11. 2 and 6, or sorry, negative 2 and 6 is positive 4. This one's negative 4 when we add them. This is negative 1. And this is positive 1. So what I'm looking for when I start thinking of all the factors is which of them add up to b. So my b value was negative 1. It's the middle term. Which adds to negative 1? This one. Negative 4 and 3. So what that means is I'm going to take that and split it up. Instead of it being negative x, it's going to be a negative 4x plus 3x, so it looks like this. Because if I simplify this, negative 4x plus 3x, that's negative x. That was my original equation. So I'm splitting it up here, and then I'm going to factor by grouping by saying, okay, looking at these two items, what can I factor out of both of them? I can factor a 2 and an x from both of them. And when I do... Factor that 2x out, I'm left with x. I factor a 2x out of the negative 4, and that's minus 2. Now, if you're ever wondering, am I doing this right? You think, well, if I multiply it and foil, not foil, if I distributive property this back in, 2x times x, well, that's 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. So that's what we're looking at. Second set. What do both of them have in common that I can factor out? The answer is a 3. And when I do, 3 out of 3x leaves me x. 3 out of 12 is minus 4. Huh. These are not the same. So then I try it the other way. What happens, so again, I had negative 4x plus 3x. 
Here I'm going to write it the other way as 3x minus 4x. It's the same thing. We just wrote these in the other order. And then I'm going to do the same process. And hopefully, if I do it this way, I will get something out of here. Let's see. So I'm going to take an x out of there. And that would give me 2x plus 3. And then what factors out of both the 4x and the negative 12? Negative 4. And that would leave me with x minus 3. So what I've ended up doing is found out that I cannot factor this one by grouping. So not all of them are factorable. And I wanted to start with one that wasn't. So we can go through several different ways. If it was factorable by grouping, then these two parentheses set things would have been equal. But they're not. All right? Clear from Professor. So let's do another one and see if this one will factor. So we start by taking a times c. So for me, that's going to be 3 times 28. Which is... 84. Is that correct? 3 times 8 is 24. 4 carry the 2. 3 times 2 is 6 plus the 2 is 8, 84. Yeah. And now I'm thinking of what numbers multiply to 84. Well, I already have two of them because I just did it there, right? 3 and 28. And they need to multiply to a positive 28 and add to a negative 20, which means they're both negative or they're both positive. And since this is negative, that means they will be both negative. And what do those two add up to when we add them? They add up to negative 31. So that's not what I want. And then I need to think of other numbers that multiply to 84. Two and... 42, but they need to both be negative. Are those two going to add up to negative 20? Nope, they're going to add up to negative 44. How about negative 4? Negative 4 goes into 84 21 times. Those add up to negative 5. So I'm getting closer because this was negative 31. This is negative 25. I need to get to negative 20. Is there another pair going up? So 5 obviously does not divide into it. Does 6. 6 into 8 is once. There's 2 left over, so that's 24. 6 into 24 is 4, 14. Do those add to? Negative 20, yes they do, so that's my pair. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3x squared minus 6x minus 14x plus 28. Look at these two, look at these two. In that first pair, what can I divide out of both? 3x leaves me with x minus 2. Out of 14 and 28, they're both divisible by 14. And usually, when this number is negative, that means I'm going to divide a negative 14 from it. Negative 14. It'll be then x. And if I go 28 divided by negative 14, it'll be a negative 2 as well. And now, I can continue my factoring process because they both have an x minus 2. So if I factor that x minus 2 out in front, I'm left with 3x minus 14 equals 0. And that would be my fully factored version of that particular quadratic. So here we do another one. First thing we have to do, as we've been doing already, find a times c. 
So that's 8 times 5, and that's 40. And now I need to look at the positives and negatives. Something that's going to multiply to positive means they're either both positive or both negative. Adds to a negative, so that means they're both negative. So when I'm doing this, I'm thinking, what are two values that multiply to negative, or yeah, basically, multiply to negative 40? So we already have one, negative 8 and negative 5. And those add up to negative 13. I need two more numbers that multiply to 40. 4 and 10. Okay, 4 and 10. Remember, though, it's got to be negative 4 and negative 10. Those add up to negative 14. Negative 2 and negative 20 add up to negative 22. That's the number I was shooting for. That's my pair. 8x squared minus 2x minus 20x plus 5. Once I get this pair, the negative 2 is there, the negative 20 is here. So what we're actually doing is I'm taking this negative 22 and unsimplifying it in a very strategic way into two numbers that will hopefully allow me to factor out through grouping. All right, what do they have in common? They have two and an x. That leaves me with 4x minus 1. When I factor that 2x out of the 2x, I'm dividing it out. Remember, it doesn't go away. It's dividing out. If you need to think about it, think it's divided by 2x. Divided by 2x. I'm going to have 2x over 2x. That's 1. It's minus in between. 8 divided by 2 is 4. x squared divided by x is x. I've got this uh, 20x and 5, and since the first one is negative, I'm going to factor out a negative. What number goes into both 20 and a 5? That's a nice one, 5. When I divide this by 5, I'm left with 4x. When I divide 5 by 5, I have, oop, but it's not positive. It is negative, negative because I'm dividing out negative 5. So I'm dividing it by a negative 5. So that leaves me with minus 1. As luck would have it, there it is. 4x minus 1 is the same for both. And I'm left with 2x minus 5. And the reason why it's important to say equals 0 and this is where we're going to be getting to next when we're working these problems, is if I have two numbers, this block here and this block here, if I have two numbers, two things that multiply to 0, give me two numbers that multiply to 0. Like 2 and 0, 5 and 0, 10 and 0, something and 0, which means if, one, if this is 0, the whole thing equals 0. If this is 0, the whole thing equals 0. So where we go from this next is I would say, well, 4x minus 1 equals 0. And then I'd solve it for x. Add 1. 4x equals 1. x divide by 4. x is 1 fourth. I'd also take 2x minus 5 equaling 0. Add 5. 2x equals 5. Divide by 2. x equals 5 halves. Those would be what are called the zeros or the roots of that equation that I can find a whole lot easier if I factor. Now you try this one. I'm going to hit pause. Well, you're going to hit pause on the video. You're going to work on this problem and then come back with a solution. So after you found the AC, which we said was 12, last number is positive, which means they're either both positive or both negative. Since the middle number is positive, that's how I know that all my lists are positive. That was my goal 
for them to add to 13. Split the 13 then into the x and the 12x because it was 1 and 12. So that would be the 1x and the 12x. That's the relationship with those two numbers. And then factor. 3. No, can't factor a 3 out of them. x, I can do that. 3x plus 1. And again, what we're doing, we're just dividing each of those by an x. I have 12 and 4, both divisible by 3. That would be 4x. No, sorry. They're both divisible by 4. A positive 4. 3x plus 1. They both have a 3x plus 1, so I'll factor that out in front. 3x plus 1. Left with x on the left side, 4 on the right side. And if you're ever wondering, Professor, did I do this right? You can very simply check by doing... Firsts, 3x times x is 3x squared. Outsides, so plus 12x. Insides, plus 1 times x. Lasts, plus 1 times 4. And then you simplify like terms, 3x squared, plus the 12x plus an x is 13x plus 4. That was my original equation, so I know that I did this correctly. Five times six, that's 30. Both positive or both negative, because this is positive. Middle number is negative, which means they will be both negative. And I can start with the ones I already did, so negative five and negative six. Well, that's going to add to negative 11, which is not negative 17. Negative 15 and negative 2, that will add to negative 17. That's my pair. 5y squared minus 15y minus 2y plus 6. Again, grabbing these numbers here. They added to 30, or sorry, they multiplied to 30. They added to negative 17, and that was my target number because that's my B. So the two numbers, negative 15, that's the negative 15Y. The negative 2, that's the negative 2Y. And then I'll factor a 5Y from each of the first ones, which would be Y minus 3. And then I'm going to factor a negative 2 from these, and that will be y minus 3. So that will be y minus 3 and 5y minus 2. Sometimes I get asked, does it matter which order we do this? Well, let's see what happens if I do it in the other order. So if I were to write it as 5y squared minus 2y, then minus 15y plus 6, I will take these and divide a y from each of them and when I do I'm left with 5y minus 2 and then from these two they're both divisible by 3 and since it's a negative right here didn't mean to move it like that it's a negative right there I'm going to take a negative 3 from them and then that would leave me with 5y minus 2 look at that 5y minus 2 and I'm left with y minus 3, which was the same thing as this one. The only difference, this is written the y minus 3, then times the other one. This one's written the other one, then times y minus 3. And multiplying is what's called commutative, so it doesn't matter the order. It is the same thing. So it doesn't really matter which way you go. But as we go with this one, we see right away AC is negative 12. 3 times negative 4, which is what I started with, right? 3 times right here, 3 times negative 4. That's negative 1, and that's my middle number. So the first one I picked 
So 3z squared plus 3z minus 4z minus 4 equals 0. Again, 3z minus 4z. That's the 3z minus 4z. Factor 3z from each of those, z plus 1. Factor a negative 4 out of each of those. It's really paying attention to your negatives here. So if I divide that by negative 4, that's a positive z. If I divide this one by negative 4, that's a positive 1. They both have z plus 1. Z plus one. And be 3z three three minus, minus 4. Correct. We're getting in the habit, hang of it? Yeah. Good. About the time we get in the hang of it, then we got to switch things up. Hallelujah. What's missing? The there is the no line. middle term, yeah. and there's also a y squared. Oh, but wait. <coughs> we talked about this. Boy, I can't spell. We'll just make that a giant U. Difference of squares. Difference of squares is a special type of quadratic that you will see often. If you take me for the next course, intermediate, or yeah, intermediate algebra, then you're going to see this uh, many, 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 many times as well. And you're going to hear me harp on it just as many times. The difference of squares is a special way to factor. If I have something that is a squared minus b squared, it would factor into a plus b and a minus b. How do I know that? Because when I FOIL this, if I were to FOIL this out, it would be a squared, which is the first. Outsides is negative ab. Insides is positive AB, and then last is minus B squared because it's negative times positive. The middle terms add to zero. I'm back left with this. So to do this, I can factor that top number quickly by saying, well, what, what is the square root of 4? Well, that's 2. What is the square root of x squared? That's x. And then I look at the last term. What is the square root of 9? 3. What is the square root of y squared? That's y. One of them's positive. The other one is negative. That way the middle terms will add to 0. And that's how you factor the difference of squares. There are other special forms like sum of cubes. If I have two things that are cubed... And now I can already see that my equation here, this was supposed to be a 3 when I typed it in, y cubed plus 27. If I follow the format of what the, and this is true for all sums of cubes, it can factor into something like that. So I'd factor this into a plus b. Well, it's looking at what's the cube root. If this is a cubed and this is just a, then if this is y cubed, that means this is just y. And if b cubed is 27, what I'm saying is what number times itself three times is 27. Now, it's not divided by 3, so it's not 9, but what number times itself three times? And the answer is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3, well, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. Common cubes that you're going to see, 1 8, 8 is 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2, 27, 3 times 3 times 3, 64, 4 times 4 times 4, and 125, 5 times 5 times 5. Those are going to be the most common ones that you're going to see in a math class. So then this would be y plus 3 because that's the, y, the, the, the b value is 3. And then I take a squared. My a in this case was y, so it's y squared. Minus a times b, well, I had a was y and my b was 27, so it will be 3y. And then plus b squared, which would be 9. 
And if I take this next one, I'm doing the same thing. What I'm looking at is, do I can I know the cube root of 64? And the answer is yes, that's 4. The cube root of 125 is 5. So then I'm going to start plugging that in. It will be 4a plus 5. Parenthesis, a squared. So again, my a was down here. That's my a. Even Don't get confused with this a. But it's 4a, little lowercase here, for that first term. Um, so then square, that'll be 16a squared, because 4 times 4 is 16. a times a is a squared. Minus this number times that number. 4a times 5. 20a, and then the last number squared, which is 5, 5 squared is 25. And that's how you would factor the sum of cubes. This, however, is not factorable. So if you get to here, then yeah, you'd be done. And then there's also difference of cubes. And again, for some reason, this should have been a 3. There, it's a difference of cubes. We'd follow the same format. So that equals the first one, y, minus the second one, 3. The first one squared, so that'd be y squared, plus 3y, plus 9. These are not super common ones that we're going to hit on and talk about much. Uh, and as far as like final exam kind of things, when you're given an opportunity to have a sheet of paper with whatever else you want to have on it, this would be something to throw on there in the off chance that it might happen. And it would simply be a matter of just plugging in the values, recognizing and looking and say, hey, factor this difference of cubes. And the question would probably even say, factor this difference of cubes. So if you wrote down on your little sheet of paper the difference of cubes formula and said this in, in words, said difference of cubes, that would be your big, biggest hint on an exam. When it says factor this difference of cubes and you find it on your sheet, you put in the corresponding numbers and values. New experience. I want to experience. And there is, uh, this is what we covered today. This was 6.3 and 6.4. Those are the problems that are on your Check Your Understanding page. So there's really no need to write it down here since you're going back to that Check Your Understanding page often to look for all the things happening. Uh, aside from that, as you're getting ready for the final exam, the exam to review quiz that was online, not everybody has done that. I recommend going and doing that if you've done it many times. And you can do it until you get 100%, um, which is like nice because then you can get more points. Um, you can keep going back and doing it and redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. Um, and beyond that, uh, this is the last lesson this semester right before Thanksgiving, so enjoy your turkeys.